So finally, we have our inventory management system ready, and I'm ready to take you through the process of developing this inventory management system. This is the React UI, and this is the Spring Boot API built in Spring Boot, and this is the API documentation for this inventory management system with all the objects you need well-defined in this API documentation. And this is the UI built in React. And now this is the tutorial steps. We are going to be working on this with this tutorial for the API and also for the UI. This is the inventory MS complete application, the React UI. And this one is the inventory MS complete application Spring Boot API. Now, before we continue, so let me show you some of the features of this inventory management system and also show you how you can take advantage of this course and be able to build this system yourself step by step with my support. Now let's take a look at some of the features. I've identified some of the features right here. And as I mentioned each of them, I'm going to actually show you in the application how it works. First, this inventory management system can be used for customer orders and they can be used for purchase orders which means that you can use this application for departmental store, supermarket, your warehouse, and also for any kind of asset management that you might need. So if you take a look at the orders and you go to, for instance, these are the orders and they are the totals, and you can take a look at the other details. You can see the items and you can see the order is not complete at this point. And you can see that once you add an item to the order, it's actually recalculating the statistics or the summary of this order. So you can actually use this system to manage a store or, or even an online uh, shop shop or a physical store you have. And let's take a look at one by one some of the features. So one of them is from the UI side, we have React routing and protected routes. What does it mean? So we have some of the routes or some of the pages in this application, they are protected. So what it means is for you to access some of the pages, you have to log in. Some of the pages you might not need to log in. If I go to the logout, which is actually called log account, you see I could log out from this application. I can actually try to log in or try to register. And if I enter my username and my password, I'll be able to log into this application to the dashboards because this dashboard is a, protect, a protected route as you can see. And we also have the concept of using the context hook. So let's assume you have some of the states or some variables you want to be available in the whole component in this application. Let's take for instance username for instance or maybe uh, authentication token uh, that you receive from the backend, you want to maintain it across all the pages. You can also store this in the context. In the context, I'm going to show you how to use the context hook to store shared states that will be needed across different components. Now we are talking about React features that you are going to learn. Then we talk about managing user authentication. How do we handle basic authentication? And also be able to make this information available in the context. There are different ways we can do it. And I'm going to explain this to you. In case of JWT, I've explained this before now in a different tutorial, but in this inventory management system, we are going to go over it step by step and you understand how actually to implement JWT in the Spring Boot API and also consume it in the React UI. And we also have table rendering. This is very important for every application you build, you should be able to manage tables. So let's take, for instance, if I go to inventory and go to products, for instance, this is a table. What do I mean by table management? You have that this table, you can filter it. So if you enter, for instance, the items you enter in the search box, you, box, you can filter this table to be able to display what you want. You can also go back to the normal view. And also you can paginate this table. For instance, this is page one to five of 32. You can select the next page. You can also set the rows per page. So I can set it to 10 and I, I can actually see 10 items per page. And of course you can go to the details. You can go to uh, det details. You can also go to the edits. And also, if you want to delete, you want you can also delete. So this is what I call 
table management. And of course, one thing you can realize is we also have a concept of notification uh, called the snack bar. So if you try to delete an item, for instance, delete, you see the snack bar message displays here. So this is a cute feature. I'm going to show you how to implement it using the material UI, which is a, a UI template or a UI framework for React. Let's look at another feature. We also have request interceptors. So if you are sending requests from your React application to a backend, you have several requests from different components. Now you want to attach some headers to this request. You can actually attach these headers in individual requests, or you can create an interceptor that applies to all the requests going out from your application. Let me show you how the request interceptor looks like. So I'm going to take you to the application, actually to my development environment, because actually I'm going to do this with you. So no problem, I'm going to just show you how it looks like. We are going to implement it from the scratch, but just have a view of how it looks like. My request interceptor is simply what you see here. It's so easy to understand. So we have this Axios instance and it's using the username and the password to implement basic request authentication. And it's attaching the credentials to all the requests from this application. So once you have an interceptor like this, you can, it can be applied to, to all the requests going out from this application. You don't have to set the common headers in individual requests because you have it set in your request interceptor. I'm going to teach you this concept of request interceptors. It's quite easy to understand. And of course, other things you can attach include the Biera cocoon and user credentials. Another aspect of React UI may be the images, working with images as well. Now, working with images is very important as it makes your application to be more appealing. So take, for instance, let's go to the user uh, table. So if you go to the user table, you see some images right here. You can see that if you click on the, any of the image, it displays an enlarged uh, version of this image. And of course, who is this? This is me. Uh, this is a picture I took when I traveled to, to Paris. To, this is a Palace of Versailles. Uh, so working with images makes your application to be more appealing and more user-friendly. I'm going to teach you how to implement this. But images is not only about displaying these thumbnails. Let me go to my profile page. So if I go to profile, you can see another aspect of managing images. So these are messages. These are messages uh, sent. Uh, these are conversations I had. These are tasks. These are projects. These are comments. Now this image can actually be changed. How do you upload the images to the server? And how do you upload this image asynchronously so that immediately you upload it, it displays on the page. And that brings us to the next part of something very important, and that is how to host our application. There are different hosting services I've tried, and I'm going to take you through each of them. So let me take you again to my dev environment. This is the React UI. I'm working with uh, VS Code. And now you can see Azure right here. I've connected to Azure, the free trial. You are not going to pay anything. We are going to deploy our application to Azure for free using the free trial. And I have the Azure services. And I can simply create one application in Azure and deploy this application straight to Azure. We are going to be doing it during this tutorial uh, right, right from now. So we are going to come across this later on in subsequent um, uh, lessons. And of course, if I go to the Spring Boot site, you also see the Azure Explorer right here. I love Azure. I also love AWS, but we are going to take them one by one. I'm going to teach you how to deploy to Azure, to AWS, to Heroku. If you have any other place you want me to deploy, please let me know as well in the comment box. Let's look at another feature. So we have another feature. Let's see. We have user login, logout. So we have user login and logout. So I actually have showed you how we can log out of this application and also you can actually register a new user, user right here if you want. Now let me just show you something about this UI because we are going to be using the core UI framework. We are also going to be using material UI. So core UI, material UI. What is the difference? I'm going to show you in a minute. Now take a look at the product form. So let's take a look at the, or maybe the others form for instance. So if you go to 
at this you can see this form how it looks like it looks neat let's maybe let me try something else supplier for instance when i go to edit you see this form looks neat right this form is, is designed using the material ui uh, framework or the material ui library let me show you another form so if i go to products and i go to edit you, you see that this form looks a bit different than the other one so the material UI kind of gives us a more visually appealing design. We are going to be exploring using material UI to build uh, different kinds of uh, UI or visuals. Another feature of this application is um, state management. Later on in the tutorial, when we discuss about advanced concepts, we are now going to be talking about state management using a state management tool like Redux to manage states. State to be made available to different components across your application, you might need a state management tool. Another cool feature I have to show you is about the graphics. Uh, so you have these graphs right here. So you can see order placement over months. You can see customer order versus purchase order trend. And you can see additional reports here, purchases over months, customer order versus um, purchase order. How do you fetch data from your API? And of course, display them on a neat graphic report like these ones. Um, what else do I want to show you? So let me talk about maybe category or subcategories. So if you go to, for instance, let's see, um, order management, I go to orders. Yeah, let me talk about orders. Now I'm going to show you how to implement the calculation of your order summary. You want to calculate the taxes, the shipping, the total, the subtotal, and then the grant total. And of course, when you change something, let's say you decrease the items here, it's going to actually recalculate the total of this order. And we also want to talk about um, selecting item and filtering the drop down list. So, what do I mean? So, let me see if I can get an example of this. So, let's say we have a bit. Yes. So, we have categories electronics. And on that subcategory, we have the subcategories for electronics right here. If you select another category, let's say books, it's also going to filter the subcategory to display only the subcategories under that specific category. There are many, many things we are going to learn as we build this inventory management system starting from today. Within today, I'll let, I'll let you know everything you need to set up. And we are going to also discuss what you need to do to fully benefit from this course and be able to take it from beginning to end and have a complete application in your hands. So the first thing you want to do, uh, let me go to the API side, the effective way to learn. So let me just explain one or two things. The first thing you want to do is there are two pages here. These pages will be live. I'm going to be updating with different uh, features or different explanations you might need in these two pages. The first one is this Inventory MS Complete Application Spring Boot API bookmark this page so you can go to bookmark and bookmark it so that you can open it easily. Also bookmark the second page, which is the React UI, which is this Inventory Complete Application. A React UI also bookmark this page as well. Okay, the next thing you want to also do is you want to contribute to the main repo if you want. So I'm going to be providing you with link to the main repo and show you how you can contribute. You have to simply create a fork of that repo, clone the fork to your local repository, and then you can make changes and submit it to the main repo. I'll review it. I will review your changes and maybe merge it in and we deploy it. And you can see how your changes appear in the UI. It's so beautiful if, you did, if we, can, we do this together. And also check for daily updates. Before then, if you notice issues or bugs or something you want us to enhance, please also highlight it as well. Daily updates, check for daily updates in my channel. There will be daily updates on this inventory MS. So please check for daily updates and you'll see the daily updates uh, from the community. Now, after now, immediately after now, quickly install IntelliJ, install VS Code, install MySQL Workbench, and install Postman REST Client. So now this is uh, this is VS Code, right? And this is IntelliJ right here. 
the Azure plugin and other plugin you might need. I'm going to show you how to set them up uh, as we move. Um, what else do you need to do? And also actively participate in discussions. I'll be doing um, some um, meetups online, um, some webcasts. Let's actively participate and let me know once you have any challenges. I'll try as much as I can to respond to you in the shortest possible time. If you are reaching out to me, use the hashtag InventoryMS. If you use the hashtag InventoryMS, I'll recognize that you are working with this uh, InventoryMS because this is going to be just for about one month or six weeks we are going to complete this. This is InventoryMS built with React and also for the UI and built the API built in Spring Boot. So we are going to be doing this together. So I'd like to thank you for viewing. Uh, the next thing I also want to mention, if you've not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe to my channel. Click on that subscribe button below. Now, if you go to my channel, uh, you have my channel by typing my name, Clinton, the Tech Pro. And let's say you just choose a random video, choose a random video. So I'm, getting, I'm just going to pause this. Now, if you say thanks, that'll be fine. So once you say thanks, you can buy me a coffee or something. Uh, some of these specs and some of these things motivate me a lot when I see people giving me needed support. Later on the GitHub repo, the complete application is actually available, but I'm going to make it available to you as we go. The assets you might need for this application, I also make them available. If you look at this page, you see links to the assets. So if you scroll down, for instance, we have the data model. We are going to be going through this together. But let's say you want to create the data models. There's a lot, lots and lots of them. The product, the category, the subcategory, the order, the inventory, um, the, the users, the suppliers, the vendors. All, the, all these models are right here. So if you click on this link, it takes you to where you can get the models and you can download them and actually use them for free. And the same with the repositories, the services. So that limits or reduces the time it's going to take you spend, spending working on the API because I want us to complete this API in a very short time. So this is a much I can take for now. So please uh, install everything you need, subscribe to my channel, leave me a comment, hashtag InventoryMS, and also try to follow me in my social network profile. So let me know you are following this course, InventoryMS, and we are going to do this together. It's going to be really beautiful, and I promise you I'm going to always be there for you, and I also need your support by you being there and also leaving me a comment that motivates me because this takes a lot of time to build, so I need your motivation, I need your support, and let me know that you actually support me by your comment. And so let's stop here and let's meet up in the next part. If you want to meet up with me personally, please let me know. I'll try to see what I can do to reach out to you. So let's get ready to start and let's see in the next part.